It is day 174 of a screenwriter's journey. If I'm doing, well, no, it's not half a year in days. That would be uh, 182 and a half or 183 if it was a leap year, right? I think that's right. Uh, it just feels like it. It's been, that's how many days, but of course there's been off days or days off. Those could be two different things, as I said. And I still haven't gone back to see when I started writing this, but it feels like April or May. I don't think it was June. I'll, I should, I'll have to look one of these days. Anyways, um, so here we are. We're having a little gabbing jabber fest between Abby and Luke. Again, pursuing this angle of who really Holly is and Luke's not really conspiracy theories, but we understand he's from that school of thought, which these days is a pretty good school to be attending, all things considered. Um, and again, I mentioned this yesterday, there's sort of at the beginning, they're sort of talking about two different things, and then they sort of get on the same track here. And I've mentioned several times, but it's always worth mentioning again that you don't just be, just because someone asks a question, that doesn't mean A, the very next thing we hear has to be the answer, or B, the question has to be answered at all. Sometimes a question will be born out of the rest of the conversation. Sometimes it will be implied by something else the person says that isn't necessarily the answer. Um, and so here I'm, I'm kind of going off something that I had maybe written or alluded to earlier. Maybe or maybe I just came up with this as I was writing the the whole thing of why Abby's parents didn't adopt uh, Lexi. So I'm not going to read it for you or read it to you, but you can read it. And this being that this is basically virgin writing, I will undoubtedly have to go back and do some tweaking of this. I'm already doing some. Look at that. The idea being that Lexi was trying so hard to be good that Abby felt like she was sort of not usurping her place or taking away her place, but making it so that Abby would maybe, you know, have to work doubly hard in order to be um, not taken seriously, but, you know, the good daughter. And so... Abby kind of ratted her out or complained would be the more likely thing. That's what I'm getting to eventually. And um, so I thought that would kind of be interesting. And we don't know at this point, and will we know later? I don't know if Abby will ever come clean to Lexi and tell her what she did, or maybe Lexi already knows or has a hunch. So that's a little bit of angst or friction between them, which obviously they've patched over because present day they're, they may not be besties, but at least they're hanging out and obviously going kind of through this adventure together, even though they've been soon to be separated. And so that's kind of what I'm getting at and we'll see if it works, but it is, you know, a little bit of sort of oomph or something for Abby. And of course, she, uh, another reason for her to feel guilty about what has happened, not that, well, I mean, you could play the what if game, but if they would have adopted her and then maybe Holly would have, you know, not been in her life so much and then none of this would have ever happened. So you could always play the what if game with 
every scenario in every film or in life, you know, what if I would have turned left instead of right at that light? Or what if I wouldn't have run that red light? Or what if I would have run the red light? And so people in real life and in movies beat themselves up all the time on these what ifs. And this is one of those where it's not going to go that deep, but uh, I guess I'll have to see as I rewrite this if it's worthy of keeping in. So I'm sort of working through this um, as I do my commentary. And so Luke is sort of figuring out what happened without Abby having completely having to completely spill the beans or give a bunch of exposition, um, which of course is not a good thing in my opinion. A lot of TV shows do it. Uh, some movies do it. I may have mentioned that when I went to see Tenant, I would I would almost like to read that script if it was available. I did not like the movie. It was just too too complicated. And what I recall is that. I swear 80% of the line was just exposition and either explaining what was going on or what had gone on or what will go on. To me, there was no character development. And it was just, I mean, they were just constantly talking. It felt like to me and, and they were explaining stuff that you couldn't explain through visuals or through the story. I, I don't know. I, I don't remember it super well, super well, because it was a while ago, but I do remember not liking it and thinking it was a very sloppy, lazily written script compared to some of his other stuff. Although if you think about it, I imagine something like Inception had a lot of that too, but maybe not as much or maybe it was just more interesting to me. Okay, so I've spent, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to, give enough voiceover to get through this point, but you can see what I'm doing. Um, and so hence the little bit guilty as Luke just said there, although maybe I'm going to delete it. Let's see. <laughs> the suspense is too much. Huh. So I don't know. Leave a comment because I know you like to leave comments. I never read any. I honestly have not looked at any of the, I mean, I'm only getting one or two viewers a day, maybe five on a good day. And I don't know how much of that they're watching. I keep threatening to go check the analytics. But when you have so few people watching, I don't even know if the YouTube analytics are meaningful or not. Uh, but honestly, I've never... You know, I've gained like three subscribers or maybe four since starting to upload these way long ago. But I don't know that I've seen any comments. I've seen them on Facebook in the groups that I post these in. And most of them, I'd say, I would say 60, 40 or 70, 30 are like, why are you wasting our time doing this? And I'm usually my response is. I'm a very measured one, like, hey, no one is making you read this <laughs> or watch this. So it's just sort of funny, but it's not really funny. Someday, I'm still convinced that someday this is going to prove valuable. And I would be very surprised if anyone's ever done this. And now I know why. It's, uh, I mean, A, yes, it's, I've said this before, it's not a ton of work, but it, it is work that you could be spending writing. But I do contend that going through your script and seeing what you did and then making note of it out loud and, you know, opening up yourself to the world. <laughs> I mean, it can't hurt, I don't think. I don't know that it's going to help. But I, I still think that this is a worthwhile exercise and I could be proven wrong, but I don't know how someone would prove that. All right. Um, so where are we here? I couldn't ask you to do that. Be there when you meet your mom. So now Jake is asking um, if he can go with Lexi and 
uh, so we're getting out this this criminal psychology thing and i still don't know if this is the best way to get this out um or i mean it it could be a brilliant way to do it or it could be a horrible way i'm not convinced that it's either at this point I mean, the current dialogue is not good. I'll get a little extra credit. I, I say it's no good, and I hope I have rewritten it since then, but maybe I haven't. Uh, oh, look at that. I'm going to get rid of a bunch of stuff, or maybe not. Oh, it's so funny how now I have to go back and... Okay, so I'm... Sometimes you go back, and I'm, I mean, I say you, it could be just me. You go back to change one thing, literally a word, a sentence, to make it fit with the current story, the plot direction you're going. And you go, oh, either you, it's the domino thing, or you go, oh, well, this dot line isn't very good either. And you start rewriting the scene, and it ends up going in a different direction, which, again, if I was a super good index card and plotter and beat cheater uh, theoretically i wouldn't have to do this i i still don't buy that but i'm sure there's much better writers than i that make it work um i'm gonna be a cop i do when you look up criminal psychology and where what career path that prepares you for it really isn't a policeman it's more like a profiler or even like a social worker in a way. I spoke with a woman recently who has a criminal justice degree and she, her job is basically, at least right now, I'm sure she's done other stuff. She, she is one of the managers at like kind of a halfway house for young women in their high school years who have had difficulties and either ran away from home or got suspended from school or whatever. But it's, it was interesting to me that she had a criminal justice degree. All right. Now, that's one of those, my first three years, that's one of those movie clever lines, which in real life probably no one would say. And I do get accused, um, and not necessarily in a bad way, but it's like, oh, Jack must have written this script because I can tell his style. And I don't know if that's always in dialogue or exactly what, but so now I'm jumping. You want to be a copy? Think I'm making one thinks I'd know my first. What makes you think I'd know? So that's it is. I mean, Jake's reply to that in my first three years, in addition to being one of those movie lines, is kind of a leap ahead of like three lines of dialogue that I contend don't need to be spoken because of kind of the capper and that's another thing that to me and i'm not saying my dialogue is all stellar but good movie dialogue you can get from a to z without the whole alphabet if you know what i mean you can get from the beginning to the end of a scene and you don't have to take every single step um, if you write correctly i was gonna say right right but i didn't um so now where am i what do you think so far all things considered she seems to go another thing at some point given what i'm writing current day which is february 28th um to be posted in the first week of march or so I'm going to have to go back through this and make sure all of this logic still works because the story, fortunately or unfortunately, continues to evolve or maybe devolve. <laughs> I hope not. And uh, what I've written here may not even make logical sense anymore. I hate it when that happens, but it does seem to be relatively easy to go back and make those changes. And having said that, it's certainly not always the case. Uh, 
Okay, so I'm changing the gist of this scene here. I, I my tendency in writing self reflection and and trying to be as objective as possible that I often intend to make a scene sort of more dark or dramatic or full of conflict and then I do something to levy levity it up a bit or lighten it up and it ends up not really delivering that punch that I initially think it's going to or that it should and so that happens when you get into kind of clever, jokey, you know, whatever conversations or something, and then you kind of lose that edge. And so sometimes when I go back, I try to regain that. And I think that's kind of what I'm doing here. I don't know how successful I will or won't be. So I'm, yeah, I'm just playing with this to what I was going to have Holly basically say there is that um, he needs as sterling record as possible. And so obviously if he does something stupid, like gets, got Lexi pregnant and she did or didn't have an abortion or didn't, or didn't have a kid and they found out everything i'm sure if it was going to be a police especially well anything in that line of business i'm sure the background checks are quite rigorous but this is where i'm realizing i think i may have checked on uh, the internet to find out where the likely career paths are and when I realize it's not necessarily the cop, um, as a cop that is facilitating or necessitating this change. Um, so probably say goodbye to this next line unless I go and rewrite Holly's line. Oh... See, now that's interesting, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> I still have that line in there. <laughs> we'll see if that lasts. But that, I mean, that that's kind of interesting that Holly is basically speaking, maybe at least right now, speaking for herself and basically told Jake, you better be careful because if you do have a stain on your record, something, you know, it could be harder. Um, but I, I don't know that that my first three years, that may be too big of a leap of, of intuition. All right, so now Holly breaks the news to him. I don't remember if I kept this or not. Um, or what? why I decided that Holly would break it to him right now based on their conversation. So I need to really think about that. I don't know if I'm going to change anything or not, but um, if she said that I'm a deputy U.S. Marshal, you almost feel like she might say it right after Jake says you wouldn't happen to be speaking from experience and then maybe a beat or something and then she would make that statement. But you know, my feeling about beats and moments and all that kind of stuff. It's it's more for the writer, because um, I think if good actors are doing a table read on this, obviously, or once again, the production, the director doing it, they're going to not just rifle through the dialogue because there's no pauses or anything. Obviously, sometimes there's action and direction, but when there's lines, you know, like that, it doesn't always last. Speaking of not always lasting, this day has lasted long enough. Bye-bye.